Two weeks ago, I launched a site to swap books and you had a lot of thoughts. Today I'm fixing it entirely guided by your comments. But before that, there is an insane update that I did not expect out of all of this. Paperback Swap, the site that I roasted in my original video, but there's one problem with it. It is hideous. It is booty. It is so overwhelming to look at. Has updated their landing page. Let's take a look at it. Well, it definitely looks a lot better. I am so sorry to the developer slash designer whose day I ruined. Mahmood says that website was defiantly made by a backend engineer. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually do work on front end a lot, but I'm certainly not a designer. I just get good designs and I implement them. I've never quite done the process of making something pretty myself. So yeah. Speedgator says that free credit is going to be abused to all hell. I think you're right, but in other roles I've had, I've had to do all types of stuff to prevent people from logging in on an unexpected device or signing up with the same device twice. So I have a pretty good idea of how to get like 90% of the way there and the 10% of abuse I guess I'm just okay with. Right now it's so small that I'm able to monitor it pretty closely and detect unusual patterns. Uh, Cause the reality is not many people are using it. So I don't know. Terms of service and privacy policy lead to page not found. There's no way to delete your account. There is no IM print and there's no cookie banner. I don't know whether you need that. Um, honestly, these things are fair. I'm personally being selfish and usually don't look at terms of services or privacy policies. I know, shame on me. You know, we all get stuck in our own worlds and think that the way we do things is the way that everyone do things. So I just released it without it. And I was like, ah, don't let that stop you. But thanks to this person, I have implemented those. They are here. Uh, all they really say is don't abuse the credit system and don't try to scam people. Now, one of the most common questions I've gotten is, does this work outside of the US? I'm working on it. The challenge is, it, for me, it's really friction um, and learning the domain of how shipping works outside of the US. Sadly, I'm a dumb American and I uh, don't know how Royal Mail works, etc. The third party service I'm using to generate the shipping labels does handle that, but I need to add more filtering. Like when you list your book, you should only see the ones that are a reasonable price to ship. So only ones that are nearby, but I haven't built out a service to know where you are. I guess people can just input their country, but now I'm like, what do I do with all the books that already exist? Uh, I don't know. It's been a little overwhelming. It's definitely something I'm working on. There are just a lot of nuances to the problem. The front end looks vibe coded. Uh, I got a lot of comments like this, like AI generated, AI swap. Uh, yes, I use AI to code. I think most engineers you talk to that are deep in the software industry will tell you, yes, they use AI as a tool. But I think the concern here is that it looks entirely AI coded, like I didn't even do anything. That's not true. And I think the reason that it appears that way is because I use Tailwind and ShadCN. ShadCN is a component library that basically gives you the look of your website and you can customize it. I just did it. So that's probably why my site looks like every other site. I obviously would like to change that in the future. I, I guess I was just really more sucked into the logistics of how do I match people's requests and actually help them ship a book out in the best way possible. I've started a few startups in the past and the one consistent piece of advice from every successful startup founder I've gotten, it doesn't matter how good it looks if you find people who really need what you're building and really want it because they will use it anyway and work with you as you make it better. But I think that's the mentality I was going in with. And I, I think that still remains true. There's truly no point in me making the most beautiful possible website for people that actually don't want to use it at all. And so part of this was putting it out into the world and wondering, do people even want this? Would be a nice feature to include the books blurb when you click on a book to request. Done, check it out. This was actually quite easy. I already had the data, I just had to display it. So that's not me for not having that at first. I wish there was a website for swapping anything. It's just very challenging to design it in a way that it will be fair and usable. I think this is actually the end goal of what I'm imagining. Books at the start, because it's just a problem I have. It's a problem I know a lot of other people have is that they have books on their shelves that I'm sure they would love to exchange for another book. However, what this really is, and I'm about to use some fancy terms, but it's a decentralized barter system essentially, where by virtue of participating in the community, you get access to all of the community's resources. Um, the problem with making it for everything, which I'm still trying to figure out the economics of is, let's say for some reason we did books and then we also did furniture. Is a book worth a sofa? Is a sofa worth a chair? Or does it all work out because if somebody got it, it means someone got what they wanted. I'm not sure and I'm still doing research into that, <laughs> but that is the end goal. I think at first I want to make it work with books so that I have a good foundation so that I can add anything. 
Um, I've already built this out with that idea in mind. And so my entire backend is built such that the day I want to add video games or records or baby clothes, um, it's going to be very easy. I just got to figure one out and then I can start expanding. Sola says you should set up a proper homepage that displays books that are listed with the most active ones on top. I actually totally agree with this. Um, one of my favorite parts about the Uber app, when you open up the app, the first thing you're going to see is your map and a button that says order of the ride. And I actually really value that. The experience of opening up a website or an app and the first thing you see is the thing you want to do. So I have updated my landing page. Great suggestion. I think it's a much better experience. It's much clearer, no stupid generic marketing page. So thank you for that suggestion. Now I want to go over some of the challenges I'm having just because I, I think it's interesting. I've set up this admin dashboard where I can see what's going on. One of the interesting things is that although people are signing up, only 8% of my users are actually listing a book. So I've thought about how to fix that problem. I've tried to make it more obvious. And as soon as you sign up, there's a list your first book. I've even tried removing the free credit unless you put up a free book, but it seems like the people that are signing up just aren't really interested in listing their library and maybe more interested in receiving. Um, I think what's really happening is that the people that watch me on YouTube are more interested in technology and silly things and aren't necessarily the readers on BookTok that have entire rooms full of books that they're not gonna read again. So I think this is really just a product market fit problem. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that just means like you haven't found the people that are perfect for what you, you're making. I, I think another issue is that there are 11 people that have requested a swap and they're just not being answered. I think the only way this works is if people who request a book get to have their book fulfilled as quickly as possible, but I don't really know how to make that happen, how to enforce that. I suspect what's happening is that people are signing up and then just never using it again. Uh, I do have automated emails that remind people like, hey, this person asked you for a swap. You can at least decline them so that they can get back to what they were doing or be communicative. Uh, and then I've implemented after seven days, the swap is considered declined. And I guess I should be removing the book too. I, I think what I have to do is maybe at some point just make it invite only and reset, but have a more tight knit community of people that are really willing to be active and have me pester them and be like, hey, can you please ship this book to this person? That's about it. Right now, my main goal is to get one person that's not me to complete a swap successfully. So we're still on that grind. We'll see if it happens. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was fun.